Today, we're going to talk about the death of JavaScript and the future of web development. Hint, JavaScript's dead. It just doesn't know it yet. So yeah, I think JavaScript's going to die. But that doesn't mean it's going to die today. What I'm talking about is the future of web development or the future of application development and how I don't think JavaScript's going to be in that future. Is that future five years from now or 10 years from now? I do believe that JavaScript, its dominance will erode over time. So if you're out there today and you're like, what do I learn today? We're still building HTML, CSS, and JavaScript with web applications, but I think that's gonna change in the future. So before you leave an instant thumb down or leave a hateful comment, I want you to think about the future of web development and where it's going. And I think I have a lot of reasons why I think that JavaScript will not be a part of that future. So you may be asking yourself, hey, what's wrong with JavaScript? Are you some kind of JS hater? And a lot of times when you see videos like this, we tend to take this personally, like it's a personal attack against us because someone's saying that what you do for a living is gonna be replaced by something else. And I'm not a JavaScript hater. I use it every day. In fact, we teach this at our boot camp. Now, I believe currently today that you should learn JavaScript because that is part of the standard and things that are getting paid for, for people to get paid to do to build websites. You've got to use JavaScript to do that. But there are some changes that are coming down the pipe from the, from the, the governing bodies of the WC3 that make the rules of which we build languages and tooling and how we build applications. And there's a lot of reasons why these people want to replace JavaScript or look at some of the flaws inside of JavaScript. Number one is obviously security. Running all your code in the client side browser can be a problem at times. There's also things with performance or speed. Those are problems as well for some JavaScript applications. And then it's also a dynamic language. It's not a strongly typed language. And so those are other things, um, quality of life and programming that people would like to see changed in the current modern way to build websites. So those are really strong reasons why there could be something else to make our lives as programmers better, to make our websites faster, and to also bring more capabilities and features into the browser so we can build more things like a video editor or a Photoshop replacement. Those types of things are driving the need to change JavaScript to something else. So before you give me a downvote and leave a comment or you think that I'm some crazy JavaScript hater, I want you to think about the history of application development and how those shifts change the ways that we build applications. And so if you go back into the 70s and the 80s, we use something called a mainframe. And this is primarily we built applications with COBOL. And these COBOL applications ran search centrally on a mainframe and they were delivered to a dumb terminal. And we see these as like green screens or orange screens as I used in the late 80s and early 90s. And then something happened in the late 80s. The desktop applications um, or the desktop OSs were born. And we see these companies, Apple and Microsoft, start gaining notoriety. And by the early 90s, desktop application programming was a new way to build applications. And it quickly replaced a lot of mainframe applications. And I call this the first screen shift. And the first screen shift happened, we went away from terminals running COBOL, centrally located code on a mainframe, to something client server where we're writing desktop applications, communicating with the database on the back end. And that screen shift caused a lot of companies to be born and a lot of opportunities for developers happened. Now in the mid nineties, something else happened and we had the modern day web come out. So we had things like Internet Explorer and Netscape comes out around 90, 97 ish. And what modern web application development was born and again, the screen shifted from a desktop computer to now we're gonna deliver applications in a browser. And guess what changed along with that? The tooling changed, the, the languages changed, the way we built applications changed. And we went from desktop to mobile or desktop to web, the second screen shift. In 07, Steve Jobs walks out onto a stage and holds up an iPhone and says, everyone will carry one of these and the mobile application development was born on that day. Now, I can remember being um, even in charge of Cortex at the time thinking, that's not gonna happen, not everyone's gonna carry those. And I didn't see the mobile shift and the impact of that coming. 
Now, fortunately, I recovered and got over that really quickly, but that was the third screen shift where we went from web applications to mobile application. In fact, today, 80% of all traffic is going to mobile devices and your web applications, which means that everything, the way we build apps also changed again and also even influenced the web applications where CSS had to evolve so it could be more responsive and work on mobile apps and desktop apps and the big browsers. So a lot of things are changing inside of what we do. Now, back to JavaScript. I want you to understand that JavaScript wasn't always here. It wasn't always as dominant as it is today. In fact, it replaced something else. Now, the reason we had the screen shift to browsers in the beginning was because people wanted to put a desktop application in a browser so that they wouldn't have to deploy it all over the place on desktops. They want it to be centrally deployed, but still give you that feature rich or client rich environment. Inside of web applications, what was born was plugins. And we had a, two famous plugins were like Silverlight and also Flash. And the web consortium, the WC3, got together and they decided that they no longer like plugins. And there was a reason for that. They didn't like the security holes in it. They didn't like the speed. And they decided to remove those plugins out of the browser. And so when that happened, we had another shift inside of how we build things. And JavaScript and HTML5, the things we know today, actually came to prominence when that happened. And many people that were Flash or ActionScript developers, they did not go along with that shift. They died on the hill like, this is what I know. I don't think this is gonna change. I'm not gonna change. And they no longer moved along with the next shift. I do not want this to happen to you because I think a shift is coming inside of the way we build apps that is very similar to the way mobile, desktop, and web was born, we're going to see another shift coming very soon and it's going to change the way that we build things and that's probably not going to include javascript hey if you're watching this video and you'd like to learn how to code or get that first software job i want you to consider learn.coderfoundry.com currently we have two offerings out there for you if you're the guy that needs to learn in a self-paced fashion you want to learn at home and on your own time consider our self-paced course to learn dotnet development and get that first software job. But if you need a teacher or coach or a mentor, which we would love to be, consider our virtual boot camp. They start every 12 weeks and we go full time teaching you all the things you need to learn to get that first software job. So go to learn.coderfoundry.com. So in our, in our history of building web apps, notice that we had several shifts, mainframe to desktop, to web, to mobile. And you also may have noticed those things are separated by a decade or so. Well, something happened in 2019, which is about 12 years after the mobile app um, development. And the consortium got together again for the browser and said, you know what? We need a new way to run code. And in 2019, they introduced something called WebAssembly. Now you may see this as WASM, I'm gonna call it WebAssembly. And that allows us to run compiled code in the browser. If you fast forward to 2021, 2022, you're seeing tooling come online where we can actually build web, web applications this way. In fact, Adobe has recently released Photoshop in the browser and using C++ and compiling C++ into the browser using WebAssembly. And this gives vendors a lot of more improved feature rich applications that no longer were possible with just JavaScript. And so WebAssembly is built to solve some of the problems that JavaScript has, which is security and performance being the two big ones that a lot of people talk about, but also allows us to put type safe languages into the browser. Another thing that JavaScript being a dynamic language, people see as a detractor from the language. And so people are trying to build more complex feature rich applications and shove those into a browser. Just like when we built web and just like when we built mobile, the same thing holds true. Now the consortiums are getting together and they're saying, this is the way that we see applications being built going forward. Now, WebAssembly isn't built to replace JavaScript. It's just like the web wasn't built to replace desktop apps, but once you could, it did. 
And so once you can start building these feature rich applications that you were previously impossible to build, um, a lot of people will start building it that way. And it just so happens that JavaScript isn't the target of WebAssembly. It's going to be other languages like C Sharp, C++, and Rust. And currently right now, when you look at the tooling vendors out there, you can see the big ones coming out is Blazor with C Sharp um, is very far ahead of the game of everyone else. There's also something called Inscriptum that allows us to push C++ very easily into WebAssembly. And there's also things, other languages like Rust as well. And all of these people are making performant languages, compiling it natively and running that in the browser using WebAssembly. And that's a good thing. Now, as of 2021, here's a fact you may not know about WebAssembly. 94% of all installed browsers support WebAssembly. That means it's already a target for vendors and application creators. Now, a lot of the tractors from WebAssembly are saying, well, you know what, but it doesn't have direct DOM access, or they'll list the 10 things that WebAssembly doesn't do that JavaScript does. And what I'm here to tell you is those features inside of WebAssembly will come down the pipe, and eventually it will be on par with JavaScript, except faster. And once it's faster using a language that you want to use, what do you think is going to happen to JavaScript? It will be slowly replaced by WebAssembly. So let's talk a little bit about the future of application development as it pertains to us. Now we looked at WebAssembly, which is a new target for us to run compiled languages inside the browser, but there's also some major screen shifts coming. And I think there's two of them. The first one we can talk about is Web 3.0 or blockchain development. And that's gonna use a, a language called Solidity currently right now, but other languages may come on par with that as we build blockchain enabled applications that run on top of the, the web. So we have WebAssembly, which isn't gonna use JavaScript, and then native blockchain development, which isn't gonna use JavaScript. And so as we see, as these types of applications become requirements maybe for all applications, maybe blockchain replaces identity or certificates or something like that, um, as these come online, the way we build applications will change. And of course, the way that we the languages, the tooling that we'll do that will change as well. Now, the other major screen shift that's coming is AR and VR. We've seen recently with Facebook changing their name to Meta and talking about the Metaverse. Um, that allows us to run the information that we see, not on a browser or a phone in my hand, but inside my glasses. And that is a big shift in where the information is displayed. And when it changes like that, the way we build applications are going to change dramatically. And so if you look at the, the current landscape of VR glasses or some of the AR headsets, they're using game engines for development and, and primarily two stick out. Currently right now, that's Unity and Unreal Engine. And both of those use a couple of languages. On the Unity side, it's primarily built out with C Sharp. You also can write some modules in C++ and run those in there as well. And Unreal is primarily built with C++, but they also have a scripting engine also that you can use C Sharp to build those. And if you look at um, the, the Oculus headset that is built with Unreal and Unity, as well as all the other headsets as well. So game engine development or building things like you would a video game is going to replace the way that you could build a lot of your web applications. And that means you're going to have to learn new tools, new language, and a new way of doing things. And that currently doesn't include JavaScript. In fact, JavaScript has been removed from Unity, and I don't think they're going to be in those game engines. They're even a target for those game engines. So someone would have to build a brand new game engine and get adoption from the industry just so that they could say they could use JavaScript. And I don't think that's going to happen. I think the way that AR and VR is being built today is the way it's going to be built for the foreseeable future. Now, there's been other glasses that we've seen in the past, like AR glasses, um, like that look like this, then the smaller form factor, those were primarily built with Android applications. And so, yes, you can build JavaScript, um, use JavaScript to build Android apps. That's, that's definitely possible today. And so if someone releases a glass like that, that's just an overlay of the world, and that's how you build, I could see JavaScript maybe um, being used that way. But once you start looking at the major vendors out there and where they're going with applications like Flutter and now Microsoft with .NET MAUI, they are targeting 
languages like Dart and Go and Microsoft using C Sharp to build these cross-platform apps that run natively. In fact, you just write the code once and compile it and they support, they'll be able to support these new hardware um, footprints as they come down. Now, we don't know what those glasses look like, but if say, if Apple releases an eyeglass in the near future, you can bet that you're gonna build that with Swift, their, their current tooling, and then .NET MAUI and Flutter will also support that, which none of those are going to use JavaScript. Now, could we see React being a React Native being able to do something? Possibly, but what I think is going to happen is the decision to use compiled languages is going to dominate versus the ease of, I just want to use this with the language that I already know how to do. And so I think that when you look at AR and VR development, it's primarily going to be built with game engines and cross-platform applications like .NET MAUI and Flutter going forward. So all of this brings us to the point of what should I do? Well, today, you should definitely learn JavaScript today, but if you want to future-proof your career, I think what you need to do is learn a server-side programming language like C Sharp or Java or C++. Those are the languages that are going to be used in AR and VR development. It's probably going to be used in Web 3.0 development, and it's definitely going to be used in Web Assembly development. And so if you want to future-proof your career, make sure today let's learn full stack development with something on the back end like c sharp and we believe that at learn.coderfoundry we teach you the tools that keep you relevant going forward so is javascript going to die today it's not today but i do believe in the coming future in a short five to ten years its dominance will erode over time and be replaced by other ways of building applications and that's not something that we need to fear that's something we should embrace because every time there's one of these screen shifts, fortunes are made, opportunities are born, and new people get new opportunities to build things they didn't think were possible before. So I hope this helps. Good luck and keep coding.